Hello and welcome to another video from Alberta Bushcrafter. My name is Dean and yes, it's kind of official. Um, I've become a bit of a knife guy. You guys have seen it because I've gone through the work sharp I picked up on Boxing Day and you've seen me go through the Kershaw Camp 10 which I have been playing with by the way and there's a bit of a learning curve to this thing you know it's it's a great knife for hacking and chopping though but not for zombies because they're not real so if you're gonna get a zombie apocalypse knife get one made out of rubber you know you're not gonna hurt anybody with it you've also seen this little guy this is the uh, stainless steel El Cheapo Winchester um, hunting knife. I do still say I love the burl on that thing. But while I was going through my knives, other than my uh, Victorinox Swiss Army Trekker, which is um, that's a fixed blade knife. I'm not in, sorry. That's a folding knife. I'm not including that in this video. But it's just it, it kind of made me realize after a couple of purchases that as far as all the rest of my knives go a I haven't spent a lot of money on them uh, in part I gotta say thanks to amazon.ca on that one uh, you can get some really good deals on knives there but B other than those two knives you just saw um, I have all of the same brand and I know some of you guys already know that because, well, it's the Mora. So let's go through this a little bit. I've actually been using Mora knives for 20 years now. And I've got the camo tape on this, but this is actually my first. We'll get into that in a moment. I, I have actually gone through the Mora knife or Mora of Sweden website and um they're excellent knives and it's an excellent company it was actually well let's find out because the name is on one of these yeah let's have a look kj erickson out of sweden and the other one was frost or frost knife uh they both combined i believe in 2005 to become mora of sweden and Frost is always more for fishing knives and especially kitchen knives, though they did make some regular knives. And of course, Mora's been, or Ericsson blades have always been for the uh, outdoors and hunting and the trades. So let's take a little closer look on these and see what we can see. Okay, here's the first bit of the collection, and I'm going to start off with two very interesting ones. Um, before um, before Mora's really became standardized so this one I know I have called this one a classic number two and actually be closer to a classic number one but I've recently discovered that it's not that because it's got this little guard on it this is the Mora 612 I'm sorry, it's a 611. 612 is just a hair longer. So it is basically, I believe it's the classic one, possibly the two. I think it's the one. Um, it's actually, you can see here, it's still got the same red ochre handle. I just coated it with tape for better grip, uh, which needs to be replaced. But very nice knife. About a 99 millimeter blade. And this one, actually, I don't know if you can see this. But we will try to see it. It actually says, now, the camera does not do macro, my apologies. But the name on that is K.J. Erickson. Take my word for it. This is almost shaving sharp. The way you can tell, uh, 611 or 612 from the um, more classic one or two, is that little guard and the sheath is slightly different 
the way I could tell this was a 611 was that particular grip on the sheath, the, the particular belt loop. Sorry if I don't if I sound a little proud of myself there, but I kind of am a little bit. I've always wanted to know more about these guys. So this is my first knife ever. This was bought almost the same time. This is an oddity. It's also got the KJ Erickson blade. But you'll notice, plastic handle, older style. It's also got a lanyard hole in it. And it's green. It has a slightly heavier sheath with just a nylon belt loop. KJ Erickson blade. Let's compare. Oh, uh, yeah. Same length. So this is staying with me because this is a precursor of the, uh, or a slightly rebranded version, in any case, of the classic, uh, well-known Mora 511. Except I haven't seen 511s with the lanyard hole. Maybe an older model did. That's what I like about this. Is this is also, oh yeah, that is shaving sharp. This is my usual knife. And a number of years ago, you may be familiar with this one. This is actually the more a companion type sheath. Um, this is the light in my fire, fire knife. This is collaboration between Mora and light in my fire. You can see it's got a slightly different profile grind on it. Also shaving sharp. I do that. I use the Lansky Deluxe Kit to get a killer edge on these. This one also has the fire steel in the pommel. Pommel is not good for much hammering or anything else like that, but it's nice to have two tools in one. The edge on this, which is something I have to point out with Morris. This one, the back of the blade was ground 90 degrees. With the old Erickson blades, which will now say Mora knife on it. It's not, it's stamped out. So it is a big blade mod that people do. They will actually grind the rear of the blade perpendicular, which several of these are gonna get that treatment. This is another one. So let's have a look here, again, at the light in my fire. Sheath's a little nicer too, but I'm looking at one of my others, it's a brand new one, and I notice it's almost the same sheath. But yeah. That's a good blade. Um, notice the handle profile though. This is what you will call a companion style handle. So more a companion. You will see more examples of it. And remember this. It's a little larger to grip and very often rubberized. And it's quite nice. The reason I say that is this one fairly new. The rear, sorry, the, the spine of this blade is not a 90 degree spine, but take a look at the grip again. This is actually called a Baco carpenter's knife. As you can see, there's the Baco symbol on it. This is a rebranded Mora Companion F. Stainless steel blade on it. It's got a Baco stamp on it, but that's the same blade. That's the same handle and everything. So Baco, which incidentally is uh, Sandvik of Sweden, was its old name. Uh, Sandvik and, well, yeah, Sandvik and, uh, well, Ericsson and Sandvik and Frost have done a lot of work together, a lot of collaboration, and, uh, well, this is probably one of the, offshoots of it. It's a rebranded and differently stamped Mora knife blade. Let's get a little further down the line here. Notice this one. See how familiar it looks. There is no lanyard hole. This is a brand new 
out of the sheath it's sharp this is the 511 well-known design All right well let's go side by side here Mora 511 Ruko yeah this is Ruko is again it's like the Baco it's been rebranded but they are the same knife same carbon steel blade same non 90 degree spine and I have two of the 511s show you something quick this is the 511 sheath this is the Ruko sheath they're almost identical except for the strap right there this is the 511 sheath take a look at that again and this is the 611 sheath that's how you tell you get a 611 right there because that clip is the same that's not even a clip it's a belt loop the only difference is on the 611 because there's that little guard it's actually the Mora sheath here it's like the, the for the classic there's a little groove in there I've always liked this knife the one I've used most actually is this old Ruko but that's partly because some of the other knives are fairly new second one I use most that's the uh, light my fire fire knife this is my carpentry knife this goes in my um, toolkit let's move on a little though because there's a few others and I've got a new one this one is a little odd this is the Mora knife 731 so it's a basic knife but it's actually got a much longer blade on it that's about a f almost a six inch blade um, I am going to be doing some work on this you notice also the handle is not the companion style handle it's the kind that's on the bushcraft black so this is a carbon steel blade so we can get close enough that you can see yeah it actually says more a knife it's one of the new ones it's a brand new blade I paid $13 Canadian for this blade so I bought it you know, for the same reason that I bought the Winchester so I could mess around with it and this one I am going to use as, uh, for demonstration and stuff I am going to mess around with it this has got a slightly larger grip than a companion style grip it's nice it doesn't have the one little thumb knurl in there or finger guard or whatever you're calling it because I'm still new to this but very nice blade carbon steel I almost don't want to use this but I bought this for a reason and I'm going to be doing some modifications on it so this is the 731 another one I found interesting the sheath by the way is a little fiddly on these it's just a friction fit the other one I picked up now that is getting to be a long blade it's an eight inch this is the Morna 749 notice how it's actually got the blue there they say this is a general purpose blade let's compare so there's the 749 let's get these out of the way there's the 731 so here it is and here's a 511 so as you can see 749 is twice the length of the, uh, the 511 yeah. this is just going to be a basic bushcraft knife I am going to uh, I'm going to treat it with something and file the back to file the spine to 90 degrees 
This one I haven't decided what to do with yet. It is stainless so it can't be uh, blued or anything like that. But seems like a decent knife. It is not as thick. Let's get those out of the way for a second. Because here's an oddity. So this is actually, it's the red ochre handles and everything. This is often called a Mora, Mura, sorry, that's how my Swedish friend pronounces it. Oh, wow, almost got my thumb there. This one is scary sharp. So this is actually called a Mura draw knife. That's quite neat. So it's that same blade, but it's got two tangs on it. Uh, unfortunately, unlike the draw knives I use in the shop, this has got two bevels on it, so it doesn't quite work the same. It is great for debarking, like just does incredibly short work on debarking uh, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of wood. I used to have a little eye bolt in there but I took that out a couple different reasons one was it didn't sit in the pack properly but this one actually comes with just a little leather sheath you can see this is a bit old it's actually got a little bit of oil in there but this is actually a blade I use a fair bit and now final one in the collection final minus one because I may get another one this year and that's this one this is the Mora companion heavy duty MG and I want to point something out um, watched a few videos from Black Owl Outdoors and he said the MG stands for military grade no it stands for military green how I know that is that this one is the Companion F and same style of handle as you can see uh, let's get this better same style as you can see of handle of grip but this is F because it's fluorescent orange yeah as you can see hopefully this one is military green now also from a wonderful video from crick over at black owl outdoors he's actually compared the price and durability of the mora bushcraft black and and so on the mora survival the bushcraft survival knife to the heavy duty and what's interesting is he's found, and this is shaving sharp almost out of the, it's quite sharp, not shaving sharp. What he's found is they're both three millimeter thickness. Um, the only real difference is, you know, both have, a, I picked one that was a carbon steel blade. Only real difference really is the coating on the blade. There's really no difference. And the more a bushcraft is another 30, 40% more. Uh, maybe even double in some cases I have seen that on Amazon so this is actually one of my knives I am looking most forward to playing around with because this is almost a bushcraft black if I wanted to I could blue the blade and it would be almost a bushcraft black as it is and you can see the sheath is very similar to the light my fire and it's almost identical to the Baco carpenter knife which is a companion F companion um, I guess it got two and a half millimeter blade the heavy duty companion has a three it is a fair bit heavier this is a workhorse of a blade now you see, what I like about Mora's is you can, for not a lot of money, everything here costs less 
than you know a really good cold steel or other premium blade so everything here uh let's see we've got uh, 30 60 100 we got less than a hundred and eighty dollars worth of knives here and that's if i paid too much so you put all these together and you got yourself quite a good little knife collection for under the price of really one top high-end quality knife that's why i like morris i will tell you the one last thing and we'll get to that in a moment and it involves these two guys okay so you've seen how Morris can be a really good addition, especially if you're getting into woodcraft and bushcraft. You can see how a Mora blade is probably your best option because they keep a wicked good edge. Um, the Scandinavian grind or Scandi grind is very easy to sharpen. The only drawback I've seen with a lot of these are the sheaths aren't great, but you know, Tandy Leather for one sells Kydex at a good price if you want to practice around with making your own custom sheath for these I am going to try such this year but yeah that's why I like Morris is they are very inexpensive and they do a good job my most used one is this little Ruko but pretty well guarantee the ones that are staying with me all the time now are going to be the uh, fire knife just because and the um, well this is the heavy duty companion MG so military green I will play around with some of these other blades like this one but as I mentioned I have a special purpose for these two 511's these are going into the contest box I've actually got a box there's, you know, there's a Baco PG-72 saw in there. Not the Laplander, I'm keeping that. Uh, there's brand new Morris Kohansky Bushcraft book. And these two guys are going in there as well. So, I don't know, it might be, a, might be up to 150 subscribers by the time I get this all organized. But, you guys will have a chance to win these. And that's good, because that's kind of the spirit of YouTube and these communities. So, that is about all I can say right now about Mura knives. And yeah, that is the correct pronunciation. While I was on break, I talked to that Swedish friend of mine and told him I was doing this. Oh, you're doing Mura blades? Yes, Chris, I am. Having a lot of fun with it, too. And, uh, okay, well, enough of that. That's why I love these blades. You know, if I need anything bigger, like crazy big, eh, I got the Kershaw. So again, not a huge jump into being a knife guy. Um, I, I like it more for the utility than the price. And again, I mean, I'm not going to spend a ton of money, like $200, $300 on a really expensive bushcraft blade. Um, I'd actually, I've got a couple of really old, large files in the workshop that are sitting there, and if I need a big blade, I just might go and follow Dave Canterbury's advice and make my own. You never know. There's tons of instructables on it, you name it. But that's another video. This one's done. So I want to thank you very much for watching the Alberta Bushcrafter channel. My name is Dean. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for your time and patience. Take care and good day.